when those are actually still in place. So just FYI, that, that's how that works. Let's talk a little bit about the drought and the current condition. That slide um, is updated as of today, right? So, as of today. So um, basically, at the, where does this come from? Uh, drought.gov. So um, we are in an abnormally dry, right? So basically, in an abnormally dry condition, um, and while the state is seeing historic rainfall no pack, uh, and reservoirs are, I think you've seen, <coughs> reservoirs are 104% normal, and snowpack is like historic levels, 215% of normal. The groundwater levels, on the other hand, are 62% below normal. Because it's gonna take time for that surface water to make it into the ground and have any effect. Now, our, all our water comes from groundwater. So therefore, the water conservation method or measures that we've been taking, we should still be doing. Because it's gonna take time, it's gonna be a lag, and we, you know, depends on where this water enters, right? Because it, it's coming down, the aqueduct is coming down all the rivers and streams and through the delta, and we don't know how much is that actually gonna make it into our ground, right? So we still need to have those, uh, those, those uh, in place. And the, the statistics that I gave you, they, they come off the Cal California water, water Watch, which is a really interesting site. Is the rate of recharge is something we are still studying? So we're not studying it, but we just... <clears throat> I'm not sure, is that the right? I'm just wondering about what do, it depends on where it's going in. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah out there where the water bank is, it just... It goes in the ground, right. Yeah. But then, uh, when does that molecule of water make it to one of our wells? <clears throat> right. And it could take years, could take decades. You know, we it, there really hasn't been a study other than the, the uh, hydrologic studies that were done, or the uh, hydrogeologic studies that were done for the, for the, water, uh, the water adjudication. So, all of that was then, you know, based on that. And right. so, uh, but the, the good thing is that and I'll get to that later, is that, is that we do get credit for water um, as, it, as it relates to the water master, depending on where we put water, you know, water that we control. Okay, <clears throat> um, Actually, at the end of this, you're gonna see a, uh, you're gonna see a little short video about the wastewater plant, um, and, <clears throat> I will say this, we're, we're very proud of this facility because it's producing great quality water well below the regulatory limits. So one of the things that, that the expansion did was it took nitrates out of, nitrogen and nitrates out of the water so that the water that we are now percolate actually is below the drinking water limit. So we can actually take a credit with the water master for that, for meeting those, uh, meeting those uh, water quality limits. Uh, we have a very capable staff that is knowledgeable and very enthusiastic. I did. I, it's really a joy to work with those guys. <clears throat> and, and just FYI, so one of my previous my one of my past lives, uh, I was a consulting engineer. I was with Boyle Engineering. Boyle Engineering used to be the engineer for the district way back in the 90s, and I actually designed the one of the first structure that went out there for the wastewater plant back in 92, just FYI. Mm -hmm. So I, I do have some history with the district. Um, and uh, I've seen the district grow. I, I've seen the district have a very optimistic look at growth and then not see that come to fruition. So it's been very, um, it's uh, been very sobering, right? Uh, to see what's, what's happened with the district. But uh, I think you kind of have to evolve with not just you know what we're experiencing with climate potentially, but also evolve with what we what we see as far as regulatory issues. Uh, so the challenges are we've had some delays. Uh, the, the plant is making uh, making water as of December, so we've had a few months of, of uh, taking advantage of, of of making water that we can take credit for. Uh, because of the delays, and that the delays have come from uh, COVID, supply chain issues, all the things that you can think of that have been complained about over the last few years. That's what's happened to to the uh, to, to the completion of the plant. 
So we're still working on that. Um, and because of that, it's result, resulted in additional costs. So some of the information you're going to see in the video that's coming up, it was a projection. And obviously, Mr. President, and it's narrated by Mr. Perez, and you're, and you're going to see that, or he's going to mention some things, like it's going to be done by this date. It, it's good, it costs us much. Well, because of the delays, those the dates have slid, and also the uh, also the cost have gone up. So just just FYI, let me go over that video. Actually, I think we're going to go over that. All right, this is kind of cool and very informative. So hopefully, um, you found as entertaining as I did. Thank you. I'm Steve Perez, General Manager of the Roseman Community Services District. I'd like to welcome you to this overview of the Roseman Water Reclamation Plan. The Roseman Community Services District operates a city. It is these facilities that pump and store water for your needs each and every day. The adjudication was a lawsuit begun in 1999 and finally reached settlement in 2015. The purpose the court became involved was to determine the sustainable safe yield of the water basin in the Animal Valley. Every water user or group was allocated a quantity of water they could take from the ground. <coughs> Roseman went from a high of 3,000 acre feet to a court ordered 404 acre feet, leaving the district the challenge of replacing the lost water from a new source other than pumping. The water reclamation plan is necessary for a number of reasons. It will allow Roseman Community Services District to benefit by receiving credit for the production of approximately 1,200 acre feet of water each year, representing almost half of the water needed to replace the water lost and secure the water for existing customers of the district. Roseman is growing and we need more capacity. As you can see, everything is larger as is evident by the size of the new clarifier, the round structures, and the biolac, the rectangular structures. The increases in size represent a larger capacity to treat water generated by the waste stream. Our wastewater treatment plant was over 50 years old and beginning to fail. The Lahontan Regional Water Quality Control Board ordered the district to find a solution and even aided in our attempt to find a cost-effective solution. In developing the solution, we were able to come up with a way to treat our affluent water to allow it to be percolated rather than evaporated. The water master has voted to allow the RCSD to receive credit for water we percolate. This credit would offset the cost of buying necessary water estimated at between 5.7 million and 8.1 million to serve the residents of Roseburg. This isn't the most glorious groundbreaking of projects one can attend. However, when considering how many people will benefit from this uh, project, it's no wonder that it stands well above any other project that could uh, serve the people of this community. <laughs> this water reclamation plant was a major construction project and required numerous large pieces of equipment to excavate and develop new settling ponds, sludge retention basins, as well as an overflow basin to be used in case of an emergency. As of mid-April 2021, our costs are $13.7 million of an estimated $15 million. It is estimated that our overall cost will come in close to our overall projected estimate.
The project has stayed on schedule, except for changes we made to the project, which required small time extensions to accomplish. COVID-19 also played a role in part of the delay. Our estimated time of completion is now the end of May 2021. Regulatory changes, age of our plant, and community growth may be part of the reasons for building the water reclamation plan. But the community of Roseland will benefit from the increased capacity and our ability to professionally treat our waste stream, which will also benefit the aquifer and save millions of dollars in drinking water purchases for the community of Roseland. Although the focus is on the water reclamation plan, this plan is an integral piece of the overall need for water in our area. Water security is our focus at the district. We need to ensure there is water sufficient to address the needs of our district well into the future. <coughs> the completion of the water reclamation plant will reduce our dependence on imported water, helping to secure Roseman's current and future water needs. We invested and banked water in the Willow Springs Water Bank, and currently the district holds approximately 4,572 acre feet of water located in the bank and in the general aquifer. This provides a cushion to serve the community as we ramp down to our 404 acre feet as required by the adjudication. This has been a major project for the staff of the Roseman Community Services District, and they should be recognized for the efficient and professional job demonstrated in ensuring construction was kept on schedule and on budget. COVID-19 presented challenges for the construction timeline. However, everyone involved maintained focus on getting the job done. So there's plenty of capacity. There is, um, yes, there are uh, probably 10, well, right now we're not operating, see we have two, uh, those, those are aeration basins. The larger one is with the one we're operating, the smaller one, we, we have that not even on the on the system right now. And what is the capacity that you have to today? <coughs> this is waste water. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this, so I think uh, the video it mentioned 1,200 acre feet oh. per year. So that's, so, so on, getting back to you, we're okay. talking about when water hits the ground, when can we pump it out? So because we're in an adjudication, the basin being considered as one basically large bowl, um, we get credit right away for something that gets percolated in the ground out there and also over at Cool Springs. Even though it may actually take time to make it over, we get credit for it. Can you explain percolation? Uh, yeah. The it's kind of like, uh, anybody living in a subdivision has a sump. You know what I'm talking about? Drain yeah. sump. Okay, so it's it's basically collecting the water and actually putting into into um, into a pond that then you know can percolate down. So let's see. Let me go back a little bit on that. Can I do that? Yeah, so these are our three percolation ponds. Those three over there to the south. Whoops. Oh. oh, we don't want to do that again. Here, you do it. <laughs> you know, the temptation to say well, when it comes to wastewater treatment capacity that you feel pretty flush. 
<laughs> it's more like a <laughs> Only Dennis. <laughs> Pretty good. I like that. I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. That uh, was good. Um, so, uh, any questions about the wastewater plant? Because I'm pretty much done with the presentation. Um, so, our office I hours. I have a question. It's not about that. Okay. So, we did here. What's the status of the school and the water hookup? High school? The school, not, you know, um, Director Wallace, I do not know what the status is of that. You, can you? Um, well, we have inquired a few times um, about our linear feet and how much we have uh, in excess of what we're using, but the high school is not, uh, the high school is still on, um, uh, they can't, well, that's, what yeah, is not drinkable, is it? It's not drinkable now. Mm -hmm. It's not drinkable. Is so there an arsenic issue? And that's a very right. low level of, of ours, yeah. but still, it's we, we would never subject the they, students they to They tell me it. it's a turnout and everything's already there. Yeah, I, I was told year, a few years ago that uh, they were waiting for, uh, my, my knowledge of water, so please excuse me, they were waiting for something to be approved uh, that the connection, I guess, was like right behind the high school property or something for us to be hooked up to something right there. But I, I, I asked Mr. Perez, I met with Mr. Perez probably three to four times in four years just to, yeah, we have an issue also with um, United Street Park. That's our property and we are constant, constantly being asked about keeping that up and maintaining it. and the water cost, we did it, um, I think they did it in like 17, 18 maybe, or 18, 19, and the water cost was just astronomical. And so we, we had to stop uh, doing it at that time. But, so, you know, I'm looking forward to meeting with you and um, seeing uh, what we can do to improve the situation at Rosman High. Absolutely, I was gonna say that, that sounds like you need to talk, so. Um, yep. They're going to hook up the land of promise too, right? Yeah. So, um, if you want me to, ex you want me to talk about that? Yeah, it's not sure. drinkable either, right? We have parts of it. They can't drink their water either, can they? Well, yeah, they can't. I mean, you, you can drink the water. It is over the over the contaminant limit. Um, so yes, they are. Their water is out of compliance, um, and I don't know what what uh, any type of order they're, that they're under. But there is a project that's being run through, uh, they used to be called the Health Department now, it's DWR, Division of Drinking Water. So there's a, there's a project that, we, uh, that we're involved with. They have gone, uh, several communities, are, there's, a, there's an effort to consolidate a lot of little users with the district. And it's kind of started a little bit, a while ago, at least the first time I heard about it, was many, about 10, 15 years ago with, um, uh, what's the name of this? The, the, the uh, was a little district that, that was over the hill. They went into receivership. I'm sorry, the name the name slips me. But uh, but it started with that because it was a, an arsenic compliance issue. And and there's been a push by the regulate uh, by DWR to not have so many li little uh, permits for everybody. And to combine them into you know a community services district or or a common company, um, so that's kind of the effort that they're. It's kind of their impetus to to provide grant money, and because now we have a lot of grant money available. In the past, DWR didn't only have a very limited amount, but now there's a lot of money available, a lot of public money available. So that that project is moving forward. Lens, lens, lens of problems. Mr. Mayor, are you able to? Hang on a little bit for questions. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're reaching our, our, Sorry. our yeah. golden hour here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, do we need I, I do like to make one comment. I'm with Mrs. Gaines. I'm the president of the school board. I've been working with Rick Webb, and I think I know that, and I just talked with Mr. Washington, and now that Al's here as well. We are trying to get uh, set up a time where we can invite the board and yourself to come to our uh, school board meeting 
to go ahead so everybody knows everybody because it looks like um, I've reached out to Rick and I've said, hey, we need to you know, go, go back to what we tried to do back when I was on the board in 2001, that is to work together. There are three elected boards in this, uh, in this community. There's RFC, uh, RCSD, the school board, and these folks. And of course, they're always invited as well. But uh, there are issues that we want to get, get out and, and get in, and, but we want to know and get everybody together and look at each other, basically eyeball to eyeball, say, okay, community, we're going to start working together. And that's the whole purpose of doing this. Chamber of Commerce, too. Sounds they good. want to come? Right, we gotta, we got to move on, guys. I'm sorry. But I, no, I'm done. But I just wanted to let... Mr. Pingo, would you be willing to give you a tour sometime? I'd love to see the facility. Oh, absolutely. I, I can tell you that our our staff is very excited about what they're doing. Awesome. Okay, I'll reach out. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Good job. <laughs> Some old business uh, we need to take care of real quick. Um, we uh, discussed last week a board member's area of involvement where each board member will work with a county department within the county, kind of be the go-between. If you're having problems with the roads, if you have a crime concern, uh, reach out to a specific board member and uh, they'll reach out to those departments. Uh, any, any further discussion or any discussion? Um, I'd like to do anything youth-related. I'm the only member of the board with school-age children. Okay. So I'd like to do anything with like the schools and anything like, like, like sports related. Okay. We have to take a on things like that. You know. Well, it probably would be useful at this point to review the. It, it, it probably should, should have been in the. In, in this, yeah, I should have printed. It. Yeah, the uh, various subcategories that you're looking for. Yeah, send everybody an email on those. Let's push it to that one. Just let's pull it. Yeah, we'll push it to that one. Okay, so we we'll, we'll we'll move it to the next uh, next board meeting, and then our, our so are we tabling this? Yeah, we're going to table it until next. We're going to table it till uh, next month. Okay. I forgot she was there. She just scared me. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the other uh, new business. Um, part last year, to spring a red speed real quick. We formed a strategic uh, planning committee, and these two areas were part of the uh, recommendations from our strategic planning was the board members area of involvement and then having a community job fair but some concerns come up and I'd like to open it up to County Council to see if we can resolve or if we're going to be able to move forward uh, with the job fair. Uh, Chrissy can you elaborate for us or help us out here? So the concern related to the job fair is that RMAP does not have insurance coverage so as I mentioned um, earlier this week, RMAP is not able to host or sponsor a job fair, but individual members of RMAP, as long as there's not a quorum, may participate in a job fair. And I did provide a contact with EPR to see if maybe there's another way to go about having a job fair. Now, the question I have is, I know you're concerned about not having the liability insurance, but wouldn't we still fall under when we have meetings and we have the public here at our meetings? Um, are, we're covered for the meetings, so I, I'm trying to wrap my head around if we're using the same building and it's not really a meeting, but we're still going to be sponsoring with our coverage for our meetings to go over to a, a, an event. Yeah. No, it does not. I spoke with risk management. Like the meetings are a separate issue. Okay. Okay. So Joel, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Chrissy, this is Laura Lynn. Uh, can Supervisor Scrivener's office take the lead on organizing a job fair? Can you clarify what you mean by that? Like, if Supervisor Scrivener wants to have like another county department go ahead and have a job fair? Yes. Is that what you mean? Yes. So, for example, uh, in the summertime, we hold um, resource fairs in parks throughout his district um, and then end the uh, event with movies in the park. Uh, I know we've been hosting events like that for, for several years. So, uh, would it be possible for Supervisor Scrivener's office to host the job fair 
um, and then the uh, directors of RMAP uh, could just be of assistance to our office. That may be a possibility. That is a conversation that needs to be had with risk management to see if if that is something that we can in fact do. I mean, if it's a separate event and not a meeting, then more than a like a quorum cannot be present at that um, job fair. Okay, and is is the location of the event a consideration? In other words, um, would a public facility such as an open space park be better suited than a county-owned brick-and-mortar building? That's, an, that's another issue that needs to be taken into consideration. And then, as I also mentioned on um, this week, on. Um, the Chamber of Commerce is welcome to host a job fair, and it's my understanding that they usually have their meetings at restaurants because their building is kind of on the smaller side. If the Chamber of Commerce wants to, you know, host something at, at a restaurant, I mean, that's completely fine as well. So that's another option. Okay, so it sounds like there's options on the table. We just need to explore those and run them through risk management for approval. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, there's a whole lot of working pieces in it, but you know, the, the point is that RMAP itself cannot post a job fair, but there's other possibilities to bring a job fair to work on it. Okay, all right. So, uh, so Joel, um, just as a, an audience member, my recommendation would be to go ahead and table this until uh, you and I and Chrissy and, and risk management can work together to, to find some solutions. And then, and then at that time, you know, it's not that the job fair isn't going to happen. It's just a matter of figuring out who the lead agency will be and, and location and how to go about it. Sounds good. So we're going to table this item until we can uh, get your presentation. Director, referrals and comments. Actually, we need to do uh, meeting minutes. Meeting minutes. Meeting minutes. Oh. Has everybody had a chance to look at the meetings and review them? Are there any corrections that need to be made on the minutes? That's what I was going to ask. Now. Yeah, we'll go ahead and ask it. <laughs> any corrections? That's why we make sure everybody reviewed them. Any corrections, corrections that need to be made on them? I don't have them. Uh, no, Can I entertain a motion to approve the minutes as yeah, submitted? Yeah, I. I move that we accept the minutes as written. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. It passes unanimously. Yep. <clears throat> all right. Do, do director referrals and comments? Shane, do you have anything? Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Dominguez with the RCSD and the board members and staff and kudos to the staff that actually pulled off that project. Um, water reclamation and groundwater and, chemi and its chemistry is actually kind of an interest of mine. And it's nice to see projects that benefit the community. Um, after we decide, possibly after next month, what some of our responsibilities are going to be, somebody may want to attend these general meetings. But uh, I personally am having a hard time making out when the gentleman is actually up. Can you share that with me? Yes. The second and fourth uh, Wednesdays of the month. Okay. Perfect. Second at, and fourth. At uh, 5.30 closed session and 6, 6 o'clock open session. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't hear you guys. Motion on something? No, it's just suggesting when the RCSD uh, meetings were. They said the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. Oh, okay. so, I just heard second. And I six o'clock. I'll have the six. Thank you. That, that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, a couple things. Just updating, like what we do. So Joel and I will both be at the Little Leagues um, opening night on Saturday. They've asked me to make a statement to just present some remarks to them. I'm pretty excited. I played Little League, <coughs> so, and all of my kids are playing Little League. 
and my wife just signed up to be a team mom. So I've not talked to her in like two and a half days and she's been doing that work. But, um, so we'll be there for that. They've also asked us to let people know that they are doing a baseball clinic on Saturday at the high school. It's free um, for all youth. What else are you doing? And their bleachers look fantastic. Yeah, bleachers do look fantastic. <laughs> so it's been, a, it's been a lot going on helping the Little League out. So if you've ever, and um, so on Saturday, the reason I brought it up is they're doing a, an auction to raise money for equipment. Uh, all of the teams that play the baskets, and you do not have to have a child playing to participate. They asked me to say that. My wife is actually doing a community event on April 2nd at Grocery Outlet. She has gotten all of the county departments coming. The sheriffs and fire departments are both doing recruitment drives, I believe. Animal services doing pet adoptions. Kern Transit's coming out and giving information. And then um, I believe public health or human services is coming as well. So she's been really working at that. And just, we're just working, I think, on, on Joel and I are definitely in agreement, becoming better beacons of information for, for the residents of town. I think that's the most important thing that we can do. So someone, someone made a joke and said, you guys have no poll. I said, you know what I do have? Every department head's phone number in my phone that I can text. <laughs> so I think it helps. So I'm, it's been fun. So that's it for me. Dennis, do you have anything? Yeah, first of all, maybe you can tell me after. I don't understand baseball clinic. Is this for sick baseballs? <laughs> maybe somebody could explain that. Uh, the, uh, well, I, I went at the chamber luncheon today, and I got to tell you, if, uh, let me encourage you to do that. It, it's the same day as our meeting. So the third Thursday at noon at, at uh, Guido's in it? Guido's. Yeah, Guido's. It was outstanding. I, uh, it w even though the guy who spoke today is the guy who has my old job. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> you know, that was a little redundant in my opinion. But that aside, uh, I would encourage you to go. But one of the things that Laura mentioned during that meeting was about the pool, and I was hoping that she could take a minute and give us a pool update. Sure. Could you do that for us? Absolutely, I'm happy to. And um, I, if you want to hit me up afterwards, uh, when my phone is not occupied with county council on speaker, I have a couple pictures that I took today. Um, so I've learned a tremendous amount about soil through this pool project things that I never thought I would need to know or never really thought about. Um, but one of the reasons and, and one of the issues with the pool is the decking. The decking settled, it shifted, uh, it was a trip hazard, it was unusable, it was a safety issue because the decking was just a, destroyed. Um, as you know, if you drive by and you peek through the gate, the, um, the, it's completely ripped out. They actually then, after that happened, they dug down, and you're going to love this. Are no, you, I, I are actually, you getting I'm excited? Fam I'm familiar with yes. the project, so I, <laughs> I'm just shaking my head. Yes, so yes, it, keep going. Yeah, <laughs> if, if I need help, let me know. Um, they actually <laughs> dug two feet down yeah. and brought in a specific formula of soil. I didn't know there was yeah. such a thing. Uh, you know, the granules all be in different sizes and they compact together better. Um, and then they, so they, they were dug down two feet, they brought in all this brand new special soil and they, they compacted and they ran all the machines to, or so now it's all compacted, real pretty. Um, and when I was over there about two and a half weeks ago, the restrooms were open walls, insulation hanging out, plumbing everywhere. Uh, today, and I, I'll show you a picture, it's a beautiful, beautiful tile. Yeah. It looks fantastic. I'm so excited about it. So, uh, you know, the rain doesn't help. It helps the water district, but it doesn't help a swimming pool project. Um, so we're a teeny, teeny bit behind, but they are still reassuring me that it will be open this summer. So, right. there's my update. Question. Yes. We made a comment to me last two days. County of Dirt Parks and Recreation. They do not. No, that's not what I said. No. That's not what I who's said. Gonna, who's going to administrate it? Who's going to provide lifeguards? Who's going to do all those things? Okay. So the County of Kern has a has Parks Department. The County of Kern does not run recreational programming. In other words, 
they are not going to hire somebody to give swim lessons at the pool. Okay? They don't run that program. They don't run basketball. They don't run Little League. Little League runs their, their own standalone nonprofit. They lease our fields from us and they run their own program. Okay? So uh, that being an understanding. For this year, the County of Kern has, has voted and decided that they will staff the pool. So they will provide the lifeguards, but they are not going to be running any programs or programming. It'll just be open swim. Now, if there is a water aerobics instructor, for example, in the community that wants to you know, have a class at the pool, they can work with the county, and, and we can do what we can to make that happen. But that would be an independent, standalone, it would not be a county employee that would do, be doing that program. So I hope that clarifies. Okay, but so if we have somebody out there that wants to give swim lessons. Contact me. Okay. But and I will help them make arrangements. Okay, because I was going to ask the question about, there's, I don't think there's anybody in this room that would know how to certify somebody to let them out there to be it. Um, uh, a teacher, whatever. Correct. The Red Cross does that. Mm -hmm. so. The Red Cross runs any certifications for lifeguards or swim instructors. All right. So, so that's what I want. That was. I want everybody to hear that. Perfect. Perfect. The only thing I have, and Laura, um, I would uh, see if you could ask uh, Supervisor Scrivener. One of the, one of the things that I would like to see happen on this board is our young people are the future. Uh, of our community and uh, see if we can get approval to have an honorary student from the high school sit up here on the board so we can get their perspective on uh, what's going on, what, what are their concerns. And we hear all our concerns as adults, but we kind of forget <coughs> uh, that we have youth out there and they have their own concerns and uh, they can be an advocate for their peers and bring stuff to us. So if, if possible, um, if you could uh, reach out to the supervisor and uh, see if that's a possibility, and uh, I'd like to add that to the agenda next uh, month. So, Joe, I need to interject. Um, okay. We cannot do that because of the bylaws, um, and those were actually just recently modified. We cannot do that, but if a high school student wants to come during the public presentation portion and give a public comment, they're more than welcome to do so. Okay. Okay. We'll work on seeing how that can happen. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to encourage kids to attend. So, I, any, anything further from the board? Thanks for that. No, but I sure want to thank Laura for her, for her. You know, Supervisor Suscriptor is represented here every, every month by her. Right. So, and, and she's a wonderful resource. If, if you need something done, something accomplished, she's, a, she's a, an extremely helpful person. So, thank you. And I'm sorry, Joel, I know we're going over time. Can I say one more yeah. thing really quickly? So that re just reminded me, Dennis, something that uh, <coughs> I understand Rosemont and, and Mojave and some of our far eastern communities, the way that the FPPC regulations work, and it's far beyond anything that we can control, but when the, the news is broadcast, the channels that, that you guys have access to if you have regular cable are L.A., yeah. Right? But Very a lot of the news and information regarding the county of Kern comes from Bakersfield, because that's where our county seat is. So there's, a, there's an informational highway that struggles a little bit, if you will. So I just want to remind everybody, uh, if you have Facebook, not everybody does, but if you happen to have Facebook, please look for Supervisor Zach Scrivener's page. Uh, we post a lot of really great information on there. Uh, and also, if you have not done so, if you do not have Facebook, if you can send me your email, uh, then I can add you to e his email bank. Uh, and we do uh, Board of Supervisors meeting recap emails, videos called Around Kern County every Friday. We just made a lot of information through Facebook and through email. So if, if you're not getting those videos, you're not seeing that information come out, see me and we can figure out how, you, how to help you guys with that. Okay. <laughs> All right, seeing no other comments, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.